Hi there booktube, it's Eleanor here and today I'm doing a Christmas gift guide with a bit of a difference. Uh, you'll be seeing lots of Christmas gift guides on different channels from different communities. There'll be beauty gift guides, there'll be bookish gift guides, there'll be, uh, oh, I don't know, stocking fillers and lifestyle gift guides and I thought to myself what can I bring that's a bit different to the table and as you all know I have a four-year-old daughter who also loves reading and I know that a lot of my subscribers have children or have nieces or nephews or brothers or sisters and perhaps you want to get them a book because you like reading and you want to share that love with them but you're not quite sure what to get so I've compiled a a stack of Christmas and non-Christmas themed books for really I would say five and unders so let's get stuck in. The first one you will have seen in my thumbnail and is a classic and was my favourite Christmas book as a child so I couldn't not include it and that is The Jolly Postman but it's The Jolly Christmas Postman by Janet and Alan Alberg. Now I love The Jolly Postman but The Jolly Christmas Postman is really good as well. Um, just like The Jolly Postman in The Jolly Christmas Postman, our postman is delivering all the Christmas mail to all the different fairy tale characters. So on this page, he's delivering to the gingerbread boy and we can see that in the little slip, he is delivering him um, the Toy Town Christmas Annual and the annual even has lots of, oh, I've dropped something, things in, including a tiny pull-out special uh, thing as well. It's really sweet. It's just such a lovely book. As I've said before with these books, I just love the fact when I was a child of sort of feeling like I was getting post and opening the envelopes. Um, and this is a really lovely um, story and it's all about the postman and delivering all the letters for Christmas. And there's even a little cameo from Santa in there. So I think this is always a lovely one, um, no matter how old this book is. Next up is probably more towards the four and five year old category. It's for when your children are getting a bit more into sort of chapter books and they're happy for you to read them a chapter a night. Um, and this is Julia Donaldson's Christmas with Princess Mirabel, um, illustrated by Lydia Monks. Now, if your child's a bit younger, then I definitely recommend Princess Mirabel and the dragon pox, especially if they're suffering from chicken pox, because that's a really good story. This one, I believe, is two Christmas short stories um, featuring Princess Mirabelle and including lots of illustrations as you go through. And on the back of the book, there is a number of different things you can do with your children. So Christmas biscuits and potato print wrapping paper and lots of fun activities and in fact I think I'm going to do the Christmas biscuits with Matilda and I'm definitely going to make the Christmas tree hat which is in here as well so this is a really lovely one for a child that's a bit older and also as they get a bit older and they want to feel more independent I have found that Matilda really likes to hold the books herself and this is a really great size um, to be able to hold herself and pre she pretends she knows the story and when you've read that story a few times they tend to uh, tell it to themselves as well so I think this one's a lovely Christmas themed story. Next up is more of an activity. At Christmas I really like to still try and get out and about with Matilda. It's cold but it's still nice to go out and try and go walking or try and get out in some fresh air especially I think on Boxing Day. A lot of people like to go out on Boxing Day for family walks and I think this book would be a really great way to get them um, to be excited about going and it's the Gruffalo Winter nature trail. Now this is a series of books. They also have um, the summer, the spring and the autumn but obviously the winter one suits us in the UK um, because it's our winter. And what I love about this is it really taps into all of Matilda's favourite things. You get stickers um, and then activities and various different things. So on the first page here, it asks you to look at the pictures and on your stroll, if you see any of these, you get to put a Gruffalo paw print sticker 
in the box. So it gets them looking for things and getting excited and also they get to stick a sticker on if they see. And then here that you get some stickers and you have to decorate the snow scene. So that's maybe one for the pub afterwards when you're trying to have um, maybe a nice roast dinner in the pub to warm up. Um, you can get them doing some of these activities. Um, and then there's uh, things like this. If you can spot paw prints in the snow of these different animals or if it's just more muddy where you are, um, they get to put stickers in for that. And I just think this is a really great way of encouraging your children to get out and do things. There's activities you can do at home. Um, it's just a really lovely book and one that I think will really help us um, when we get back from New Zealand to sort of go out on walks and go and look for things and to just get out in the fresh air. On a totally different uh, note, the next book is Sproutzilla versus Christmas by Tom Jameson and Mike Byrne. I just saw this recently and just loved the look of it. Um, I love sprouts, my husband loves sprouts, my daughter doesn't eat much of anything, um, but certainly not sprouts and I know sprouts are one of those vegetables that some families pop out at Christmas and children are a bit like whoa um, this story is really fun uh, our main boy in this does not like sprouts um, and Sproutzilla has come and he's terrorizing the town um, and even stopping Santa from being able to deliver his presents and so in order to stop him he eats the Sproutzilla and saves everybody. But Santa still hasn't got time to deliver his presents. So guess what the little boy does? Santa puts on his nose peg and because the boy's eaten so many sprouts, they use his special power to push the sleigh around and deliver all the presents. And I just think it's a really fun quirky story and really great for Christmas time and just really taps into um, kids um, yuck factor at this age. Matilda has just started to um, enjoy saying the words poo poo and wee wee and um, everyone's a poo poo head at the moment so uh, I just think this is really funny with lots of farting and uh, fart jokes and also may encourage a few sprout eating to be able to participate. <laughs> Next up is uh, one in a range of books that we really enjoy in our house and this is the fairy tale hairdresser books. There's lots in this range, uh, Rapunzel, Cinderella, Snow White. They are a bit longer than your average picture book. There is a little bit more writing um, but the stories are always really fun and Matilda loves these because they've got sparkly front covers and this is a Christmas one which is the fairy tale hairdresser and Father Christmas and there was one um, the fairy tale hairdresser and uh, the sugar plum fairy which Matilda really enjoyed but I love the artwork in these books and the stories are always really great and it's all about our fairy tale hairdresser and how she manages to help people in need from various things um, and about the stories of the princesses and it's just really fun and it taps into Matilda's love of sort of hair and makeup at this age and also um, has a really good story and message there's normally a really good friendship message the back of this one says it's Christmas Eve but someone has stolen all the presents Christmas will be ruined can Kitty Lacey she's our fairy tale hairdresser uh, help father Christmas save the day and melt the Snow Queen's Icy Heart, a cracking Christmas story packed with elegant elves, resplendent reindeer and a host of fairy tale favourites in their festive finery. And this is just one that we both just love reading together, so I recommend this one. Next we're moving into some less Christmas themed, but books that I think are really nice and maybe um, special for Christmas if you want to get a nice gift that's got sort of a bit extra. This one especially I think is lovely, it's called Wolves and it's a the 10th anniversary edition by Emily Gravitt. Um, you can see here this is a really lovely cover in this and if you take off this cardboard insert that you get with it it's a wolf on this side you can see the head um, and on this side it's a board game which I think is brilliant and the st this story be warned is quite dark it's about wolves. It gives you some facts about wolves. I love, look, in this edition, you're getting 
a little library card as if it's a library book and it's as if this rabbit has got out a library book about wolves and they're learning all about wolves and while she's learning it there is a wolf actually following her and at the end of the story be warned um we learn that wolves eat rabbits however we do then move on and it says this author would like to point out that no rabbits were eaten during the making of this book. It is a work of fiction and so, for more sensitive readers, here's an alternative ending. And we find out, luckily, this wolf was a vegetarian, so they shared a jam sandwich and became the best of friends and lived happily ever after. Which I thought was brilliant and such a lovely um, touch. And then I just love how they've done these little things here and this opens and it's got your game pieces for your anniversary edition uh, board game and I just think this is a really beautiful gift it's just a little bit extra than what you might get with just a normal book it's a fun book it's a bit different and you get this board game and this beautiful sort of cover which I think would go down well as a Christmas present for a loved one. Next up is another book by Emily Gravitt and I think this is her latest and it's called Tidy and I just loved the story of this. It's about a badger, he lives in the forest and he's really, really tidy. He wants to tidy everything up, he's always tidying, um, but it gets a bit extreme and so when the leaves fall in autumn and winter time, he cleans them all up but decides that he doesn't want to risk uh, the problem happening again so he decides to pull up all the trees which he does but then obviously without the trees there ends up being a lot of mud when there's rain um, and so he doesn't like that so he decides to concrete over everything with his bulldozer so that everything is clean and concrete but unfortunately he then can't get either to his home or to any food and so the next day he gets rid of the concrete all of his friends in the forest help him plant the trees back and they just turn it back to how it was before and he decides that he's just going to enjoy himself a bit more and he's going to be tidy but maybe he's just going to uh, relax a little bit on it and I think that may be a message um, that I, I enjoy because before Matilda was born I didn't like things being untidy and I liked things in their place and I think when you get children you have to start relaxing on that um so i just think it's a really lovely story and then i've just got two more that i think you might enjoy the first is colin and lee carrot and pea this is by morag hood and it's such a lovely book the um story is a very simple one and it's for probably aimed at um younger readers this one um but it's so much fun it's about p um he's all his friends are p apart from colin and Colin is a carrot and it's about all the things that make Colin and P different um, and yet all the things that their differences add as positives to their relationship all the things carrot can do that are fun that um, you know peas the peas can't do so look he's a fantastic bridge and a wonderful slide and he isn't like all the other peas but they're still the best of friends. And I think for young young children, this is a really great way to introduce them to the fact that people are different and everyone's different and people look different and they come from different cultures and that, that it doesn't mean you can't still be bestest of friends. And then finally, this one has just won my heart at the moment and it's called Very Little Cinderella by Heapy and Heap. So this is the story of Cinderella. She's a little girl, probably about three or four, maybe as young as two, and she does a lot of cleaning. Her stepsisters go to a party and leave her at home with the fairy godmother babysitter. She wants to go to the party, so the fairy godmother says, OK, let's go. And the fairy godmother offers her beautiful dresses, but all Cinderella, the very little Cinderella wants to wear, is her blue dress, her stripy hat, her froggy coat and her elo welly boots because obviously children can't say yellow <laughs> and off they go she doesn't want a carriage she wants to go on her blue scooter so they go on her blue scooter to the party and she makes lots of friends but when it's time to go she's lost one of her elo wellies and she's really sad and she can't cheer up the next day and nobody can cheer her up and then 
one of the little boys she met at the, meets at the party turns up and he's found her welly boot and so they have a hug and they become friends and she notices that he's got wellies on too and so look they swap a welly and they have one each and they become friends and they all fit and they decide to laugh and play and live happily ever after it's just such a sweet story um it really like rings all of the bells for me because it's just so sweet and lovely and all about um that age when your children decide that they're going to decide what they're wearing and that's what's going to happen and they want their independence and they they're not listening to you anymore and they've got their own sense of style and you know for a party they want to wear their spider-man outfit or they want to wear their pants over their trousers or uh, or just you know fancy dress and dresses and I just think this is a really lovely story and one that you can both enjoy together with whoever it is that you think might like this so anyway I hope that I've given you if you have got gifts to buy this Christmas for um, nieces and nephews or brothers and sisters or children um, that you think that you might enjoy and you want to give a bookish gift um, I'm hoping that I've given you a few ideas and of ones that I'm definitely enjoying with Matilda at the moment so let me know if any of these pique your interest and if you do get them for anyone for Christmas let me know in the comments here after Christmas on what they thought of the book I'd be really interested to hear Anyway, I hope you're all having a wonderful December and I shall see you soon. Bye for now, booktube.